Why don't we get started? Why don't you just, you know, um, and, you know, you and I have uh, met over the years, but I never really got sort of your whole story. Like what really is inspired you to become a model as a young girl? And what was the first, when was the first time that you even discovered there was such a thing as modeling? Can you take us back to how you got started? My first memory of anything to do with modeling was when I was about eight, nine years old and my mother dressed me and my twin sister up really cute and some of our best clothes, our best little dresses, did our hair and took some photos of us just with like a roll and snap camera. And I didn't know what she was doing it for, but she was submitting us to be child models, I think for a ad for JC Penney's or something. And that was the very first time that anything to do with modeling was introduced to me and kind of seeded in my imagination as what I could do for a career. I moved to New York City when I was just 18 years old to pursue my dreams of becoming a ballet dancer. And that went well, but I kept having people approach me and say, wow, you should model. Have you considered modeling? You should consider modeling. I had a really good friend who was a makeup artist and she needed a model all the time for her test shoots. So she started calling me in. I loved it. I loved every single thing about it from the makeup to the creativity to working with the photographer. Now I have to tell you my first few photo shoots, I look like a deer in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it took some time of practice and really getting to know myself better as a woman and feeling confident within myself as a woman to really become an expert and a pro at modeling in front of the camera cut to a few years later i decided to leave the ballet company that i was working with and again i was discovered as a model while working as a waitress at a coffee shop by the casting agents from America's Next Top Model. And I guess everybody knows from there, I ended up doing the show, I won the competition, and it launched my career in fashion. I will say though, that even after doing the show, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> and it took me years to really figure out how to hone my skill as a model and how to understand how to navigate the career path as a professional model working within the industry as a businesswoman and as an entrepreneur. So it's been a journey. It started since I was a baby, but um, it's been a journey that I wouldn't trade for anything. I love it. I love every part of it. And now I love having the opportunity of being able to share all of the understanding and know-how that I've gained over the past several years working as a model with other emerging models. <laughs> Fantastic. So that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize that you weren't actually pursuing modeling at the time that America's Next Top Model approached you. That's quite interesting. That's like a fairy tale story, <laughs> <laughs> right? That's, that's the dream come true. That's fantastic. It so, is. When they approached you, um, were you immediately knew you were going to do it or did you have any, were you afraid? Like, I think that's so, you have to be so nervous, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I was, um, when I was approached by the casting agents from America's Next Top Model, they just asked for a Polaroid for a television show. And I took a little Polaroid right there on the spot at the restaurant that I was working at. And they took down my number and my information and calls me about a week later. I just went for fun. I didn't think that I had any chance of even getting on the show. And I was like, I'm just going to go for fun and yeah. the experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I guess they really liked me. And one thing led to that. <laughs> <laughs> one, so not not just them. I guess they were right for picking you because you ended up winning in your season, right? So that was exactly. Fantastic. I think you know I bring that up because a lot of people tend to hold themselves back, fear 
is sort of the number one thing that holds people back from pursuing these these dream come true careers. And and in your case, you just said, you know what, I'm I'm just gonna show up and check it out and see what happens. And then you end up winning, right? And I think there's a lesson in that, don't you think? Absolutely. I think when we're younger, we tend to be a lot more fearless. Um, and I felt like that was part of the experience when I went to the audition for America's Next Top Model. Just, I'm just going to go for fun. I don't even think I have a chance at this, but let's just go and do it. Rock it out. Um, but what I've understood about this lesson more so and as a life lesson is really learning and trusting my own beauty and my own self-worth and going with the flow of that trust in life. And if we really put a lot of intention behind believing in our own beauty and self-worth, then it can take us and walk us through doors that we never would have imagined walking through before. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Great story. Yeah, and it is, you know, I mean, I guess I'm even guilty being that person of having those fear thoughts and things that you're not good enough or you're going to be judged you know hold you hold you back and so lucky for you you didn't do that because my goodness what what do you think you'd be doing do you think you'd be a ballerina today if you didn't take that chance and you said you know what i'm not going to do it i'm afraid <laughs> where where would you be <laughs> if i wasn't modeling i have no idea i have no idea where i'd be i just i've never really thought about what the other side of the coin would have been like. I, right. I have no idea. <laughs> but that's good though. They say you're not, you, they say you're supposed to pursue your passion with everything you have, because uh, if you have a plan B, then that's where you're going to end up. So, <laughs> so, you know, going after your dreams and pursuing it worked out. And uh, I think for a lot of people, I think that's, that's probably key, right? Taking that step. So can you tell us a little more though, what are some of the things that you, you know how in life we all say, well, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done this. What, can you finish that sentence for me? <laughs> if I knew now. Then. Wait, okay. <laughs> Something I, really, yeah, like if you're, you know, advice to others that are sort of maybe aspire to walk in your shoes. If I knew then what I know now, I would have trusted in myself a little bit more. I have learned over the past 10 plus years working as a model that being polished, being poised, being presentable, being fashionable, being stylish is an all-inclusive package. You have to show up looking like a million bucks, but not only looking like a million bucks, feeling like a million bucks when you walk through the door. We're in the business of selling, and part of that is selling ourselves because we want to book the job at the end of the day. You know, I didn't want to just model as a hobby and just have that be something kind of did on the side. I would have shown up to my castings looking a little bit more presentable, a little bit more polished, understanding that my castings are part of my job, really enjoying every single part of what I do. Whereas before, when I was younger, I dreaded going to castings, I dreaded going to auditions, I was terrified. And from that fear, I... I didn't enjoy the process of it. And that showed completely to the clients, to the casting agents, the casting directors, and it didn't come across as being confident whatsoever. And what I've learned, if I knew then what I know now is the confident girl gets the job. Wow. And you have to put in so much work to building your confidence and believing in yourself and believing in your beauty 100%. And then that's when you start booking work. That's when you start becoming a professional model from an aspiring model. Right. You shine from the inside out. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, you know, I think a lot of people should learn that lesson, um, even if they're not modeling. That, I think so, too. That confidence <laughs> is really going to carry you through. 
and open those doors. Um, which leads me to my next question, which is all about this program that you're doing, because that's really what it is that you're doing is you're really helping them to become confident because you can't fake confidence. I mean, you could try, right? But I think a, I think a camera lens can tell if you're faking anything when you're trying to sort of make those pictures come to life, right? In your eyes and, and all those things. So tell us a little more about what you hope to do for aspiring models, but I'm going to say for anyone who's looking to be more confident to command a room, whether it's just to get the job and not maybe book a modeling gig, but just book a, a, any gig because you're a more confident person. Can you tell us a little bit more about what your goals are for, the, for your students that take your program? I want each and every one of my students to discover their own star power to walk into a room and command the room and demands attention with all the confidence that you have inside of you is really honing into your specific star power and your specific magic. And what I've done in my course is really strategically lay out block by block on how to build that star power by building confidence with those blocks. It's like, a tower or a castle of confidence that we're building block by block by block. And with each class, we're giving information, tools and techniques to help build that confidence so that you can walk into any room, regardless of your profession and really feel your star power shine through. When you walk through the door, you've got, like I tell all of my students, you've got 15 seconds to make a lasting first impression. Without, 15 seconds. And that's without saying a word, right? That's just with your presence, right? Just walking in the room. You've got 15 seconds to demand a, a, a lasting first impression. And it really comes down to how much you believe in your own beauty. Mm -hmm. You're in that room for a reason. You're not there just because they decided that you might be good for it. You're walking into the room because the, the group of people that you're walking into believes that you have something. So it's really just up to us to believe it ourselves and deliver. And with my course, I hope to inspire every student I have to tap into their star power, build their confidence with understanding tools and techniques and be able to command any room that they walk into, like a star, like a supermodel. <laughs> I, I can't wait to finish reading the course myself so that when I walk into a room, all eyes are on me and I don't have to say anything. So that's the goal, right? <laughs> With a hair flip, whoosh. <laughs> so, so you talk about these techniques and tools. Could you maybe give us one technique that for those that are listening and maybe those that are watching, this could uh, take away from today's time with you. So one little little secret or little something we could take away and I'll just start our inner model confidence. Sure. Um, one of my favorite classes in my course is the runway class. Not every model wants to do runway. Not every model is destined in their life to do runway. It's, it's a specific desire to really be on that stage. But I love this class because I teach all the models I work with how to walk confidently. Mm -hmm. Your walk can sell you before you even open your mouth and begin to speak <laughs> about whatever it is you're going to speak about. Mm -hmm. So I teach models that I work with how to do what I call the long stride. And the long stride is really walking a little bit longer than you naturally would to make yourself appear taller, more confident, and larger than life. If, if we're walking just in as pedestrian, our pedestrian selves, that's fine, that's one thing. But to walk in with a long stride, you're actually using a little trick of the trade to appear taller than you are and commands attention when you walk into a room. So that's one of the, a little, little tool nice. that I'd like to yeah. give. I think I'm gonna try that today. <laughs> just, Step out a little further than you normally would. For Step a out just a little bit further, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So then, uh, do uh, do models have like signature struts? Like, do you sort of when you when people develop their walk, do they all sort of take that, but then mold it into something that's uniquely theirs? Like, the, 
The model walk has changed just like the fashion industry is changing. So there are models of all different types on the runway now. Models of all different shapes, sizes, backgrounds, orientations, uh, abilities that are on the runways now. So what we're seeing is that there is a celebration of different types of expression. Where in the 90s, we saw the traditional supermodel walk where they did a lot of spins on the runway. Before that, we saw something a little bit more simpler where models were just kind of posing and doing simple walks through run runway and fashion presentations. But now what we're seeing is people doing all kinds of signature moves on the runway. We have Vogue on the runway, we have dancers on the runway, we have people walking barefoot on the runway to drums playing. The runway is so expressive now that everyone can celebrate their own signature walk. What's important though about the model walk and the runway walk is that it comes across as your own celebration of yourself, which means walking in as confident as possible and celebrating your body and celebrating your beauty. Nice. Again, to the confidence. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really comes down your, to that. It really does. Your confidence is conveyed in your walk, for sure. Your shoulders and, and all of those things. So you talked about a variety of walks and a variety of um, types of expression of walk, but let's talk about who is modeling for these days? Like, who, you know, who can be a model? What types of people is modeling for now because the 90s are gone what does it look like today i like to give the example of a good friend of mine who is bound to a wheelchair and she approached me one day and was like naima i am determined to become a model and a social influencer i want to become a face in fashion and I was like, girl, you're going to do it because you have so much heart and so much conviction. I'm interested in seeing what happens over the next few years with you. A couple years passed and she's been working on her tool, polishing herself, polishing her craft, you know, really honing in on how to be the best model she can be working on her style, working on her posing, doing her photo shoots. Cut to, she is now a social influencer for people with disabilities who is a spokesperson for Apple. She is a lingerie model. She is an athletic model for a gym based out of California. And she is just one of the prime examples that I look at of people of all different kinds who are taking on modeling as a profession for themselves. Modeling at this point, in the fashion industry, the fashion and the beauty industry, modeling is for everyone. Modeling is really for everyone of all different backgrounds, shapes, sizes, orientations, anything that you want to describe yourself as or any, any place that you feel that you fit in, there is a place for you in the industry. Wow. You know, and that is, I guess that would be so empowering just to know that. Because I think there's a lot of people that, don't think they're good enough or they look a certain way that they could never pursue it. But just to hear that means that you can create the modeling career you want by going after the area in which you feel you shine. That's what it sounds like to me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that you have to really make a determination and a commitment to Sorry, I feel like you really have to make a determination and a commitment to this being a profession for yourself and really envision yourself with the successes that you want to lead your strategy and to lead your direction of your career to get there. And also to have really great role models that you can look up to, no pun intended, <laughs> really great role models that you can look up to who have been doing the work that you envision doing. And if you don't find a role model there for yourself, determine to become a role model for other people who are looking up to you. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're being a mentor to others in your program to help them navigate this, this uh, industry, um, create that confidence that they need and identify the area that they would, would target on uh, for themselves. There's one other part that 
you know, and maybe, maybe we, maybe we shouldn't bring it up, but I'm going to bring it up because it is part of the modeling industry and it's, it's the behind the scenes part. It's that other side of modeling that some people might hold themselves back because of just, there's sometimes a lot of opportunists in the industry that are looking, you know, at people and taking them down the wrong path. In your program, do you address some of those things to help mentor your students to keep them out of harm's way or out of these dark corners? I know there's dark corners in every industry and modeling is not, is also one of them. And so how do, how do you help your students navigate knowing, you know, making the right choices? I understand that there are a lot of people who want to take advantage of people who are pursuing their passions and their dreams and are willing to do whatever they can to make those dreams come true. Unfortunately, it is a reality that happens. And one of the biggest questions that I get all the time is, how do you know if this is a scam or not? In my course, I go through detail description of what to expect from an agency that you're going to be working with, from any type of modeling or runway experience that you're going to be going into. I really wanted to give my students the tools and the understanding of this is how the business should be working. Coming from my over 10 years, 10 plus years working as a professional model. It just saddens me so much to know that a lot of the models I've already worked with have experienced being taken advantage of, and it's been my desire that that never happens to them again. So in my course, I put in detail description of what to expect when you're moving forward in the industry and how to navigate things that sound and feel like a scam. Right. And most of the time, this comes down to financial input and investment and what kind of investment and return, what kind of return is going to be coming on that investment that you're making. Mm -hmm. Should I be paying a photographer for photo shoots? That's a good question. A lot of models don't think that they should be, but there are some times where paying a photographer to give you a specific high fashion or extremely polished commercial shoot for your portfolio is going to be an investment that's going to pay off when you get a job booked based on those images that you offer. That's when an investment starts to work for you. But if you're paying a photographer, for example, that is not going to offer you quality photos and give you work in your portfolio that's going to end up helping your career at the end of the day, then it probably won't be worth it. And that's just an example of, you know, really thinking strategically about your career as a business person, as an entrepreneur, and how much of an investment you're going to be making, what kind of investments that you're making, right? right. What, kind of, what kind of financial investments are you going to be making when you start working with an agency? You know, if an agency is asking you for thousands of dollars, probably a scam, but there are certain things that you're going to have to be paying for walking into an agency. That's comp cards, that's maybe your online portfolio with their digital website, with their digital board. It may be a paid test shoot with a photographer that they really think would benefit your portfolio and your career. Other than that, you know, I don't know of any other expenses that would be normal to be asked of. But if, you know, Part of it is also looking at the agency. Are they actually booking these models work? Right. You know, those are questions to be asked. So I go into detail about really what to expect and how to navigate those kind of. It sounds, you know, it sounds just like running a business, even though you are the business, it really is like in any business, even mine, I have to weigh every decision on, do we want this software? Do we want this, you know, whatever it is um, that, is needed for the business to grow in whatever direction or to do a project. So that makes a lot of sense that there will be some expenses as a model because you are the business, right? You are the commodity that the agency is out there trying to sell and book you for these clients. So I get it. I think a lot of people don't see it that way, but I think um, that's what courses like yours are for is to give, <laughs> to educate and um, provide you with that knowledge to help you make better choices, so. 
Well, what I found is that like a lot of people come to me and they're like, I really love modeling. I really love being on set. I really love runway. I really love taking photographs. I really love modeling. But they also want to learn how to make that into a career for themselves. Mm -hmm. So the question is, how do we do that? And realistically, it's looking at yourself as an entrepreneur and a business with and of yourself. Yes, you're going to be working with an agent. You're going to be working with representation. But that agent, that representative is just to help get you into the door. At the end of the day, it's your career and it's your job to make this profession blossom for yourself. And the only way to do that is to really look at yourself as a business. How are you marketing yourself? How are you showing up? How are you presenting yourself? What kind of investments are you making to your career that are worthwhile? Not just empty investments, but ones that are worthwhile and strategic and I love that I can offer that amount of information in my course, especially my social media class, which is super fun. It has a lot of information on how to market yourself, what is branding, how to brand yourself. It helps the professional model just really blossom and go to the next, the next level in their career so that it's not just a hobby and it can be something that is fulfilling to yourself and also sustaining to your livelihood. That's great. Yeah. I can't wait to sit in on your class. <laughs> uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. So we, you're having a, an open free class coming up on, uh, what was it, July 15th, right? And that's open. Uh, so you'll be doing some free modeling tips and techniques and uh, giving us more information about that. So I hope uh, to see you then because I'll be joining for sure. Um, but any other questions uh, do you have for me before we go? It's really great catching up with you, and uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn how to – I probably won't pursue modeling because I'm a little bit – although maybe I will. I don't know. You said everyone, right? And that, that even means ages, right? All ages? All, All ages. ages. All ages, right? I All might ages. Have to, I might have to see where I fit in there. <laughs> maybe maybe – um, mean a lot, of people, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that there is an icon board at most agencies right now. An icon board is for models that are above 40 years old. And so, I mean, I'm almost there. I'm 36. <laughs> <laughs> but it's for all ages, too. And at the end of the day, I really just, my desire is to have every student walk away feeling celebratory of their own beauty and understanding how to capitalize off of that to make modeling a successful career for themselves. Well, I'm excited. Uh, thank you, Naomi. <laughs> it was so great spending time with you today. I'm excited to see you on the 15th. And I'm going to go start looking around and seeing where I might fit in. <laughs> Practice the long stride. <laughs> exactly right. I'm going to practice the long stride. So thank you so much, Naya. It was great seeing you today. And we'll thank see you. you again soon. Okay. What a woman. She taught me how to be a wonder woman.